Bruno, since you're up, can you get those doors? Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe. Okay, welcome everyone to the Shelton Board of Education budget workshop number four. It is Thursday, February 1st, 2024, and the time is 6 p.m. I will call the meeting to order. If I could please get a roll call. Rosetti? Here. Patricia Moonen? Here. Jim Fian. He should be on his way. On his way. Kate Kutash? Here. Jason Neves? Excuse. Excused. Lorraine Rossner? Here. Amy Romano? Here. Joan Littlefield? Here. Anthony Smiraglino? Here. Also in attendance, Ken Serenich, Jacqueline Tulings, Tracy Hussey, Kristen Santilli, and Al Bruno. Okay, great. Could everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, under God, full, justice, all. Okay, moving on. If I could please get an approval of the agenda, a motion to approve the agenda. So move, Mr. Chair. Okay. Motion I'll made by Kate Kutash. <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I was about to say everybody's name is reversed. <laughs> <laughs> you got that, right? You got it, Kaylee. Moving on to agenda items tonight, we will be hearing for the special education. And that would be done by I'm going to start. Okay, you're going to start. And then Tracy Hussey, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay, great. Let's move on. So this is going to be the last of our budget workshops that we're going to present to the board and the public. Um, the next one that we have will be a week from today where we're hoping for, for your feedback in which we'll put together um, over the series of workshops that we've done uh, a final budget number for the board to, to um, approve so we can move forward uh, with the city and our obligation based on the February 15th deadline. So um, special ed has always um, been an issue uh, with budgets from as far back as public education has existed. Many of you have histories with public education, have been on boards for years before, have served in the school system, and the same old questions, arguments, and discussions have always existed relative to the costs associated with special education. Um, we're going to discuss those costs tonight, but I want to be clear in our discussion. Every program that we've developed on the part of our students, every individual IEP that's been developed is in that child's best interest. We have always done our best to make sure that every child gets the education that they deserve. And unfortunately, that education comes with a cost. So we're going to talk to you tonight to share with you um, what we're putting our money forth, why those costs continue to rise, um, what we've done in the past to help mitigate those costs, and some suggestions that we have to help even further to get some cost savings here in the Shelton Public School System. One of the biggest things that had happened uh, on one of the first nights that Tracy Hussey presented to the board was to her, you know, do you have a plan? Well, tonight's the plan, folks. Tonight we're going to talk about that plan. But I want to um, make sure that we preference this plan that it, this plan is definitely about a return on investment. We can't expect to save money unless we're willing to invest money to build services and plans that the district doesn't have. You will see data tonight that we're presenting um, that Shelton has done an exceptional job versus our DERG within the state and our ability to develop in-house programs and save costs for our students already. So the idea here is there is no concept here, <coughs> although you may hear it, about overspending in special education. It's not an issue of overspending, folks. It's about an issue of appropriately budgeting. And that in itself is not an issue about what we receive from the city and what we spend. It, special education and the funding for it is a moving target. Even when we solidify funding for that today, the city could say, we're gonna completely fund your special ed costs 
and that variable can change three months down the road. Fine. We live in a town that is very prosperous, that people want to live in. We have a great reputation for our school system. We, of course, the community loves the low taxes. And so people come to Shelton with Shelton and their, their children and the needs of that children that we must provide for comes a cost. We're going to talk about how those students, you know, how many students have entered and how that is such a variable. Um, so when we talk about <coughs> underfunding the budget, it, 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 is, it is in no way um, being said to disparage our city to say that we're not getting enough money. Um, it is a moving target. So our job as administration is to kind of project what those costs will be, and then look at other means of generating revenue to save costs. And that's what I think we've done tonight. So um, in a moment, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy, who's gonna talk about these programs. Our intent tonight is not only to educate you and the public as well about what, it, what is our special ed population like and those costs that are associated with that population. You know, how is that changing? And then we will talk about potential cost savings. When Tracy is over, I'm gonna give you an updated walk about some of those figures associated with some of the costs we talked today. Tracy's presentation does have figures in them. Um, I, I, and you all have a copy of it. So I don't think when she's going over the presentation, we need to um, really hone in on the dollar signs of the presentation more than when we get the walk and we look at how that, how that matriculates onto the overall budget is, is more of the discussion. So um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Tracy. Okay, great. Thank you. And, and again, so people can see everything. Yeah, the only thing, Jimmy can slide in if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. What else? Hey. All right, so I'm going to hope that technology works for me. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> so good evening. Uh, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to start with, actually, is a quarterly report. Uh, when we met last, I shared with you numbers in regards to where we currently are as a reflection of special education identification, uh, where we are with outplacement numbers, uh, staffing. So let me start off there and kind of review some highlights with you. All right, so as far as quarterly reporting goes, uh, right now in live time, we are at 875 special education students in Shelton. There is a breakdown by category and identification. And what I wanted to do, you know, as we're sitting here and, and thinking about budget building, I wanted to take a look at where we compare. Uh, so, and I think you'll receive this as well electronically so that people can access the live links if they'd like to, because there's several others throughout the presentation that you may want to read up on or learn a little bit more about, um, because I won't be diving into some of it in detail tonight. Uh, the Dirk D comparisons is there for you, and I think you also have a print copy. Uh, and basically, this information came from the EdSite Ed uh, Special Education Annual Report. Now, the annual report comes delayed. So we're going to receive our annual report on Monday the 5th for the year 2023. What you're seeing in front of you is the most recent up-to-date information from EdSite and the Special Education Annual Report. What I tried to do by each DERG is go back and take a look at child count from the year 1819, pre-COVID, to now, okay? Um, so you have those numbers. You can see that a lot of districts are seeing a bit of a jump. Some are stagnant. Um, the identification rates are there for you as well. Um, the state average right now is at 18.5 uh, or 19% from, from what I recall last time I looked. Um, but I can get that for you too if you'd like. 19% of total districts. It's Special education identification rate in the state of Connecticut, the okay. average. Out of all the states. Correct. So um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of include for you is the number of uh, special education teachers and paraprofessionals by DERG. So that's there for you as well. Uh, 
see if I can get this to move over for me. And then the other thing that's there is the outplacement rate. Uh, so when you take a look at these numbers, a couple things jumped out at me. We are a, just above the average middle of the road in our identification. We're 10th in our DERG for identifying students with special education. But one thing that's really important for you to realize about your specialized programs that you have here, and remember we talked about that, we talked about the continuum of service. So we talked about life skills, we talked about the alternative learning center, we talked about the therapeutic learning center. Uh, those are kind of our specialized programs. So when we think about percentage and then we think about uh, outplacement, which is our high tuition cost, we're 18th in the DERG out of 23 for outplacement. And that speaks to the specialized programs working. Uh, you know, when we invest in those types of programs, you know, usually you'll see a higher rate of staff as well. Because when you're keeping your students that are needing high, high services and have a lot of multiple needs, you're gonna see probably a higher rate of paraprofessional support maybe related services, special education teachers. Uh, but we're 22nd in the DERG for ratio of staff to students. So that's the teaching ratio. So I think that that's really important to realize. Even though we have our specialized programs, we're not overstaffing them, which is, I think, really works uh, in our favor. Echo. Put these data points together by its own form. Historically, about outplacement, those have high. We're always hearing about bring somebody back, and obviously, decision to outplace a child is difficult. But as it, as the data, we're towards the bottom. I mean, we don't outplace a lot of our relatives. For instance, the other thing we always talk about all the time here: overstaffing. A too many staff. Cut staff. We're in the bottom of our dirt. I'm so there are actual data points versus the dirt, not comparing ourselves to county. County or not comparing ourselves to the valley. We're comparison person. How many? 23. 23. Um, when you say the bottom, I was trying to say. <clears throat> so the report card, the annual report that comes out in regards to special education will come out on Monday. And I'll be sharing those numbers with you too. That's divided up into indicators. Um, indicators on graduation rate, outplacement, time with non-disabled peers, transition services, pre-K, time, uh, you know, extracurricular activity. So I'll be sharing those numbers with you too. All right. And uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions about any of this, or, uh, you know, I'm happy to talk uh, when there's other questions. So I thought that that was, you know, information that's good for you to know. Uh, and once again, I highlighted that noteworthy <coughs> information. Uh, and here's our tuition update. One other thing that I wanted to kind of point out, you know, we have several students um, you know, that are in our 18 through 22 programming. Uh, Shelton has an internal transition program that really deals more for students that are on possible uh, day supported uh, programming, uh, maybe some competitive employment, but they're uh, typically students that fall in the intellectually disabled range or autism and multiple disability range. Uh, and so we do not currently, and I mentioned this when we thought about growing programming, we currently do not have a college-based uh, program where students that are exploring post-secondary education, which is part of the mandate of transition planning, we don't have that access in our current program. So you'll see that that number reflects students that are at college campus programs. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, further down the road. We, as a PPT team, have recommended 41 Shelton students for outplacement. The other remaining 17 are unilaterally placed by their parents uh, and the student. 
You know, they make the choice that they want to go to a magnet school or a VOAG school or a school choice. Um, so that 17 number, when we have PPT'd, IEP'd students that go to VOAG's magnets, they will bill us for services, okay? So any special education service that those students receive, we receive a tuition for that. And that is the... But if, they, but if they're IEP. Oh, it does. so it's still have IEP. Correct. So it does okay. not include kids the regular ed students. Yes. Correct. So right. Correct. Correct. That's going to be a different number. Yes. So those are, you know, I just think that that's an important number for you to be aware of because that wasn't through a PPT-based decision. They're just accessing their rights along with every student that's a part of our school district to access those schools that have you know, really good programs for something that they're interested in. Uh, the staffing is there for you as well. That's just an up-to-date staffing. I shared staffing with you last time. I don't think that we really had many changes. Uh, we do have a couple, that, that paraprofessional number is the current positions we have, but we currently have several that are unopened, that are not filled. Um, and we have a couple that are um, long-term, uh, you know, positions of people that are out on medical. Um, we also have uh, down at the bottom just some interesting numbers for you to think about in movement and flow. Uh, you know, kids that have entered the district uh, with out of district IEPs. Okay, so that started, that count started in July. So far, we've had six enter our districts with out of district IEPs. So we've had to plan for um, collaboration with those schools and we've had to provide our transportation for those students. Exited students from special education so far this year, 12. New students who entered the district with IEPs. This number is quite large. So it's 56 students that have moved into Shelton with IEPs. Uh, we have a number of new students found eligible so far this year, 60. Students who relocated, so students that have left our district and moved to other districts, 31. And this number is important also, and it's sad. We have 30 homeless people, uh, 30 homeless students. And when we have a student that's homeless, we also have to work uh, in collaboration, sometimes with DCF or through the McKinney-Vento Act. We sometimes have to work with school systems. Uh, we sometimes have to provide transportation services. So uh, that's a number that's constantly in ebb and flow and always changing. Special No matter where they get, have to book. Do I have any questions? Or, or should I wait for questions at the end? If anybody has any, just ask. At the very first, first two, the first one is they're outplaced. They come with an IEP that sends them to a special program. Correct. So, for instance, we have a student that moves in and has a uh, an IEP for one of the ACEs schools. Okay. And so we have to honor right. that, right? And the next column are the ones that just have an IEP. Because Correct. We can take care and of they're in our public schools. That's what I thought. I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure I got it. But I will say that uh, um, Tracy and Carrie and our staff, we reviewed the IEP because mm -hmm. one school yeah. system may not have the services. That That's right. Do. Right. If we're able to bring them into our school, well, that's right. Automatically honor and say, because they're out and out. How, how quickly are we allowed to call a PPT for that person? We call a PPT immediately. And we also contact the sending district. And we ask about what level of programming they had, right? Um, because we do have strong internal programs. And sometimes we can meet those students' needs. In these particular cases, we could not. So when, go ahead. Obviously. Out of, well, mm -hmm. this, from special education. Now, out of just mm -hmm. two. 
two so far. So two so Actually, far. no, three. We had two move. Okay. And then we had one return to district. Good. Okay. And then as a clarification, adding homeless status at one home, I'm assuming that would be for care? Something yes. That would classify. Yep. It could be kids no, in foster care. It could be under McKinney Vento. It could be kids that are considered displaced. They might be living with a relative in another town, but part of that deals with educational stability. So part of that law is we want kids to have stability and not jump from school to school to school. So that's a factor that comes into play. Um, there are shelters, there are safe homes. We have some that are escaping domestic violence. Um, so there's also. Other homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. Right, it's all awesome. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. <coughs> For clarification. Mm -hmm. The The law is called McKinney. Uh, There are yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. Just, just so that the board have it might goes be the other two way. ways. Right. Other right. districts pay us half for Pearson. Uh this mm. burden's just felt it. I'm not gonna need district. I was just talking about a district. We're billing that. Mm -hmm. So we understand. On the flip I've side, never, though, I've never heard, you know, we've never seen that. Right. On, on the so it, it goes through our office. Yes, transportation comes through our office. Um, and I'm the I'm the McKinney Vento liaison. So when somebody, uh, it, you know, from another district, uh, that district liaison will make me aware. Uh, we'll work through transportation. So in other words, I may have a student that's going to a magnet school that I can include somebody on a bus, and then we wouldn't pay that 50%. Um, so sometimes those types of circumstances can work out too, and we'll try to arrange for them uh, if we can. I'll remind the board, I know I should. We were charged by a district. All of them. Process that. I got our challenge. I love the process. Told that we had to be tough, but then I also worked our our school work. Frank was an itemized bill that we are, we are making every possible way. I mean, I would. I, I know Bristol is a bit of a distance. We're currently traveling to Bristol. So, I believe. so do they have any stone? In it, they're allowed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the law was written. <laughs> Sometimes what winds up happening is a student will come in um, displaced and enroll in Shelton. Right. And then Shelton becomes the home school. So even when they go to another, another town, to a shelter, uh, the educational stability piece kicks in. And if that decision is made that they want to continue in the school that they enrolled, then they can't. Uh, and it may not always be. Mm -hmm. like, for instance, if the uh, house, mm -hmm. the house, but but then the insurance found them a home that was it in here, because that's where insurance found. Them. But it wouldn't be in Bristol. No, no. Now, wherever that child. Is, 
Any other questions? Our Well, again, it's circumstantial. Uh, domestic violence. Found that. I went to the crystal. That's what we with the relative. There is current, uh, you know, there is current policy in Connecticut for um, time that you can spend on a bus. Right. Um, you're not supposed to it's exceed an minutes. hour right. without minutes. some sort of uh, agreement or form signed by the parent. You can go Allowing pretty much that? anywhere. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's I'll pass you. Your miles per gallon. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. He thinks we're going to get in there. It also takes me an hour and a half to get to Pisces. Yeah. 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 Clearly, yeah. Okay. Uh, Any other questions you know, before I move on? Oh, go ahead. I do. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Um, what I'm wondering is, that, yeah, I'm not understanding only one thing. When they're placed, parents' choice of where they're going, or no? No. Various schools. Um, no. I mean, the, the the placement is made based on the need. Okay. So different schools tailor and specialize in different things. Okay. So we have lots of students that uh, require a high level of mental health care. So there are schools that really are very tailored to addressing social and emotional mental health issues. There are schools that specialize in um, students with high intensive medical needs. There are schools that specialize in autism. Um, so it depends on the need. And we, we guide parents to try to for those schools that will best benefit their students. Right. So we work with them on that. Um, Out of the <laughs> districts in a approximate no. There, there a all this. So there's criteria for identification. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's checklists for eligibility. An IEP carries over from district to district, state to state. Well, IEPs are in place annually. So you meet annually, and then every three years you determine continued eligibility. So you have to meet annually to talk about the needs of the student. Sometimes a student does well and exits at their annual. But every three years, the team has to determine continued eligibility. Right. No. Right. Every three years, they go through standardized assessments. Right. Right. No, necessarily. not necessarily. So every three years, the team determines uh, the protocol or the battery that they're going to utilize to do the triennial evaluation. That can be a cognitive with an IQ. It can be academic achievement testing. It can be rating scales or behavioral. Uh, information that the team is seeking. It could be speech and language communication, OTPT evaluations for fine and gross motor. It could be a plethora of things. The team determines what battery they're going to do. Oh. Correct. But sometimes you may have a student, and this happens a lot at the high school level. You know, students grow, they mature, they develop self advocacy skills, and the team may decide at the annual review without a triennial battery, that the student's ready to be exited. And that happens sometimes, too. Please ask you. We do a good job with our testing. Are we capable? Yes. We keep up with all of our triennial timelines. Yes. Absolutely. No, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can you test it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. No, like someone. Mm -hmm. 
fine colors. Mm. Mm. Yep. Mm. Tracy, are five old prison or anyone? No. Okay. So when we think about those numbers okay. of special education students, uh, if we included 504 students in that number, it would be a much, much higher okay. percentage okay. for sure. Okay. Moving on. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So uh, I know last time when I spoke, Ken mentioned it too. You would ask, well, what would you plan for? What would you do if you had a little bit of money? So uh, the following presentation kind of answers that question um, and highlights some of the things that could actually reflect cost savings to the district. Uh, and I'll explain why. So number one, the first thing that I would do would be expand our pre-K classrooms. Our numbers are exploding in the pre-K classrooms. I talked about that at the beginning of the year too. We started off last year at 30. We started off this year at 70. The numbers are still growing. Our buses are, are running delayed. Um, our classrooms are large, all right? Uh, one thing that we're finding in our classroom is that the, the current structure of the pre-K classrooms is what NIAC looks for, uh, play-based station teaching. Um, there are some students, though, that, that need a little bit of uh, more intensive instruction. <coughs> uh, they don't do well in a group play-based learning environment. They need, need more direct, specialized instruction, similar to the academic learning centers or life skills. Once they hit elementary school, uh, I would really work towards trying to include a classroom in our pre-K program currently that could address those students and provide them with more early intervention that would target their needs. The turnaround there is they're going to be better prepared to stay in our public schools. Uh, and the turnaround is we won't have to outplace uh, you know, some of these students that just aren't learning and growing in the current structure uh, now. So I did include, when this goes out to you, uh, a link to kind of understand a little bit about how those very highly structured classrooms look and feel like. Um, there's a link there for what is applied behavioral analysis as well as uh, discrete trial teaching. Uh, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about it, when we do outplace, which we have, some pre-K students, we're outplacing them to programs that allow for ABA and DTI. Um, typically, these students that experience the most difficulty with communication, uh, intellectual uh, cognitive functioning, as well as behavior, are on the autism spectrum. And the spectrum is large. So these students are the ones that are really requiring the most uh, intervention. And would this be one center at each part? This would be one center period. period. Um, in a separate classroom. Correct. Right now we have four classrooms at both Long Hill and Ohi. Say you were going to do be able that we can condense now one of them. How long? We'll have no. to have mm, we'll still have to have our classroom. Our classroom. Okay, so then what would be, and so you're hoping after pre K, oh. It's likely that these students that, that, that are going to require quite a bit of intensive intervention would go to the academic learning center, um, so the alternative learning center, or the life skills program. Okay. Yes. Great. If Delta Public Schools. them mm -hmm. what happens is because such an are already being helped please yeah we don't have to right. creating a program like this then think about that out please have it us right so what would that your in the classroom. Okay. Oh wait, there's more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's already going in my head. What do you okay, so 
um, continuing that expansion. This kind of gives a little bit of a breakdown uh, and some numbers for you to kind of understand uh, what this looks like. So these numbers are going to translate from oh, the they block are. that we Correct. Showing them now, but we're going we're to outline them. In the so a full-time special education teacher, we would hope that that teacher has good solid background with autism. Uh, of course, a classroom requires instructional supplies and furniture. Uh, we are looking, you know, with our pre-K numbers, you know, a 0.5 school psychologist, that 0.5 school psychologist would not solely be connected to this one classroom. The 0.5 school psychologist meets the needs of the very large numbers of students coming into pre-K because each of them that enter through birth to three require evaluation and it's time consuming. Yes. Uh, two paraprofessionals. So an estimated cost is there for you. And I think it's just important to highlight, you know, for 24-25 and moving forward, um, there really wouldn't be a cost increase associated because your tuition line wouldn't increase. Uh, I know of two students in this pre-K program this current school year uh, that won't be able to remain in district if we can't um, do something that's more tailored to meet their needs because their rate of growth, you know, we, we need to see a, a better rate of growth. Yeah, right. I work. Felt by working. So there's a lot of good solid research on oh, yeah. right applied behavioral analysis and DTI instruction that's done in a very systematic way in a one-to-one -one interface um, and that level of high intensity um, for students particularly on the spectrum can produce dramatic results um, so yes my hope would be and of course you know I can't I can't predict um, and I can't say yes with hundred percent you know, insurance. Uh, but what I can say is coming from, uh, you know, coming from a district uh, that I worked in previously that had this structure, um, students made great growth, uh, and we had a very, very low out-of-district placement. How many, uh, never know how many, but say, so, say it was open for the fall. So if it was open for the fall, there are 12 identified students out of our wow. pre-K that they feel could benefit, meaning that they would be divided by AMPM to a manageable number. But there are 12 targeted students that they feel this type of structure could truly benefit. That's psychologist. What we currently have on staff. Beyond. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, their rate of growth. Yes. 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 So down at the bottom, I'm sorry, Jim. Yes, early intervention is critical. Early intervention is critical. Yes. Um, down at the bottom, just to give you kind of a target, uh, you know, when we think about tuition, um, students that have been in, in pre-K, uh, you know, an average tuition runs about $80,000. Um, you'd think that estimated transportation would be about $30,000 in a ballpark, especially if they're sharing a run. If they're not sharing a run and they're going to two different places, that transportation cost is going to rise. Okay. 
Any other questions on pre-K? Okay, well, okay. Wait, it, before we go, okay, before we go, I don't know, do you have this? Why don't we adjourn? That was an answer. Oh, uh, okay, then that's fine. That's just, not part of tonight. That was because asked for All right, I was just really trying to like figure out like how many we have now and what you're projecting, and I was pretty good with numbers. Wanted to make sure I had a clear. That's fine. Okay. That's yeah. separate. Is that, that's <laughs> well, it, it is pre-K. Yeah. But, but that's pre -K. Yeah, I just want to know because if we were going to support. Okay. The one six nine five. I want to understand <laughs> our enrollment. Yep. Amy, yep. important. Kristen has numbers for you. Oh, okay, yeah. Because when I was doing this, I was like going open up, opening up last month's <laughs> enrollment report. <laughs> Hold on, slow down, Kristen. 50 students are, sorry, I want to write it down. Yeah. Okay. And the rest are. Okay. That's that long hill. Okay. Yes. Yep. Seven. Preference but 12 of these kids possibly could go. I just want to preference that total. Yeah. Definitely buy them. Buy them. Yes. Want to minimize travel to that one. That, that was the decision. So we can't take like the portal and add it. Now we It's our kids. Small, smaller groups. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And we have the room at Long Hill or Mohegan. We have a classroom. Do it. And 12 of those possibly could go into that classroom. Up so then it, it obviously really helps reduce the size over there. You know, and, and you never know what these referrals are coming. The 28 kids maybe. Mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Do some of those birthday referrals, three, they, they hit three, they yes. can enter the program. Rolling. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I thought. Right. That's what I thought. And did you already say, uh, my very, my self, in that alternative pre K, what would be the kids uh, diagnosed? Are primarily they? students on the autism spectrum? Okay. So, oh. Mm -hmm. Just, that's why you were saying, yeah, the special ed teacher. Any other questions on pre-K? Okay. Plan number two. Thank you. Uh, point five, teacher of the hearing impaired. Um, this would be a cost savings reduction to the professional services line in our budget, approximately $80,000. We currently contract for service with uh, Crack Soundbridge. We have nine students, and our current... Uh, you know, contractual costs are $130,000 for this year. Um, a 0.5 teacher of the hearing impaired isn't an easy task. Uh, you know, I can't guarantee someone will apply. There's not a lot of people that hold that certification, but I think it's worth a dive because it would give our students better service. 
Uh, having somebody here in district would prevent somebody traveling from out of town, coming in just on random one or two hour visits. You know, it would allow for more collaboration time with our staff as well as being the cost savings. So that's this. No cost. Mm -hmm. It's actually so, cost savings. So when we do the walk, not including number five. <coughs> We will be in for this way. Regardless, regardless of the turnout of the budget, we'll post if we get to put them on staff because we'll for at approximately eighty thousand dollars money worth. Have these number staff members by 0.5. So in our, but there's mm -hmm. now, and that is find some. Correct. But when you're saying it's a, a saving, oh, we're obviously spending more than 80. 130. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. I spending. Other questions on this? Oh. No? Okay. Number three. Okay. Uh, our alternative high school proposal. Uh, I did include two links for you here. Uh, so when this does get shared electronically, it'd be, uh, you know, something that you might be interested in. The State Department of Education has guidelines for what alternative educational settings should have and, or should entail. Um, and then this is also a link for you with an envision of what it might look like. Okay, so it's kind of... We're, we're uh, not going to talk about the program. That's right. So we can do it another night. Yeah, well, yeah. But the link is there if you're interested in kind of getting an idea or uh, a vision of what a typical day might look like. Okay. All right. So the idea here um, does involve staffing. So, um, you know, in order to run an off campus learning center, there are positions that, that would be necessary. So, listed on the left are positions that we feel. Um, could uh, conduct this and run that off-campus site. And then on the right uh, is kind of some comparisons. So typically there's a range of out-of-district therapeutic tuitions. Uh, you know, they range right now with our students from $80,000 to $120,000. Uh, you know, therapeutic sites are those sites that really do focus in and harbor in on uh, social and emotional well-being and mental health. Um, currently, high school therapeutic-based student tuition <clears throat> for this school year, with all the students that we have in out-of-district sites for this reason, uh, is an is a approximate cost of $544,578. Now, we don't have all the end-of-the-year tuition, so I'm giving you an approximate based off of contractual. Okay, somebody could leave, somebody could move in, and that number could change. Another thing with the Alternative Learning Center that we're thinking could work very well could be a tutoring annex. Currently, we have expelled students in our district. Now, some have IEPs, some don't. But we still need to, when they're expelled, offer them access to their education by law. So we are tutoring right now under the teacher's contract. Uh, you know, there's a tutoring rate of pay. Um, those students are being scheduled individually for tutoring sessions. The idea of the alternative high school could include uh, a tutoring program that runs in the afternoon for those expelled students or those students that are being recommended possibly through the IEP. Maybe they're chronically absent 
chronically truant and we're trying to welcome them back into a school setting and we start off with tutoring. Um, so the idea behind having staff on the left be able to also run our tutoring program <coughs> could really be beneficial. So for 24-25, um, this program will offset your rise in tuition cost as well as your individual tutoring cost. Now that individual tutoring cost, once again, we can never predict uh, expulsion. We hate to do it. Uh, but we also can't predict sometimes these kids that uh, require a different alternative through the IEP or the 504. It might be a medical reason. Um, so we have to think about the offset. All right. Yes, there's some staffing associated, but the offset you're going to find in your tuition and your tutoring This was an idea. I came out down somewhere. With that being said, look at those nine items. Well, I mentioned this on investment. Yes, 170 right now. Us get back 500 just right off the bat. So, so you're already getting with that's and there's long term. Talked about the two, talked about the expenditures. Reason why the modular discussion. I did the after the fact. The idea of like the child success, but they go into it. Have a program. Hey, oh, high school enrollment is going down. Years <coughs> that motions. Corporal hit. Corporate. This total of staff, who were to actually put this number, you're far exceeding. I was going to say. But we're already looking, <laughs> we're already looking at, we know we have several secretary retirements. So we have retirement allocated. Talked about the five. We're asking for one, but it's talking about sheer staff possibly in high school. It's to, we have to get the program off the ground. Mm -hmm. And, and you got to remember, we put the program in place. We're not bringing back every single student out place. Mm -hmm. Got to be gradual. So over time, we can share staff from the high school, kind of make some program. As more kids come back, we increase the staff um, as well as other areas that we looked at that we know there are. Jackie and I ran the numbers. We know there's savings in other areas based on staff control. That brings this number to, to this line. So it's not as high as it's staff, but this is what would be required. I mean, but we looked at all avenues here. 30, Danko, staff of 25. Someone has to clean. Mm. Someone has to clean. Can't put that at addition. <coughs> Well, and that's what we're talking about when you talk about the five psychologists. Oh, then that could be a full-time person. Be really about that allocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have a plan for that uh, for a school psychologist to be on site. Um, you know, for one, you know, a couple of days a week. As John Kel. So I was going to bring that up. Oh, okay. did special inside okay. it. It's good news. Looking at those numbers, they're all going to come. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so, but, so I, Half time. <laughs> Keeping off medical that number. Right. He wants to no, discuss his no, benefits. No, we know whole, Jimmy. The whole yes. thing is like <laughs> Um, so, and, and Mr. Rosette, can you answer that question when we do numbers? No. Because salaries are one line item, health insurance is another. So we're looking at the salary. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about the cost yeah, savings like, salary. And I, I look at it all. No, no, I know. No. Oh, you know you're, you are. There is, a, a there is an apples, insurance. I'm, I'm not looking at it. So we're, we're putting up. And then we also, when we use average, I got you. using step, step five, one. There's a, there's yeah, a savings, savings there. there. It does cover that. Okay. okay. I know we're saving money. I'm not. No, no, I'm, I'm just. I'm not saying <laughs> that, but I don't want to get ahead. We're all no, 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 but there's. Anyone I know, there's all off. different variables. Right. Right. We I, hire their position, their step. Are they taking their insurance on their spouses? Oh, huh. absolutely. Right. Yep. But I just don't want the percentage to go down. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, like two seventy four. Right. Um, how many students approximately are we talking about, or how many can it take? Well, I think when you when one of the best things about an alternative high school is that it feels like home mm -hmm. and it feels comfortable. Um, sometimes when you have uh, a ratio that starts to um, exceed and become too large. Um, that, that sense sometimes dissipates for kids. I, um, you know, I would estimate that, uh, you know, a program like this in, let's say the school day program, which might be a shortened program, which also happens frequently in alternative yes. high schools. Yeah. Um, a good number would be between 12 to 15. Okay. Could go up to 20 because classes are rotating, right? right? They're moving. Um, and then allowing for possible that afternoon tutoring block mm -hmm. uh, where others are coming in. We're so it may be housing yeah. 30 to 35 students. Okay, good. Okay. Right. And then look at savings. Uh, how much and, it costs. And again, this is just, if it happened right now, there's long-term protection. Right. For <laughs> estimated cost. We also talked about if we establish a program and emphasize it, if we establish a program successful, we have room in our program. We can offer it to our region. They would pay to you. And that now it's make a it, revenue. We make money. Yeah. Yes. Did that. We used to do that with Ripton School. Correct, but we're not doing yeah. it. That's why we're talking right. about Okay. All right. Out of that five weeks. How many kids? How did you? So the number 544-578, I looked at our current outplacement students and the students that are at therapeutic programs. And that total is the cost of their current tuition. All of those students combined. <coughs> tuition runs between 80... To 120,000. Yes. But you're right. So there are many, many students that are at the high school. Um, oh, that are already at our high school that we could bring that over. That could benefit from okay. an alternative okay. learning environment. That's what we're So maybe like seven that we have come out, and then you take other kids that would benefit. Yeah, and I'm not saying that next year we're going to bring back all seven of those students, okay? If there's a student that is well ingrained and doing well in a program and only has a year or so left, I'm not going to upset their apple cart. Those are PPT-based decisions, and they're in the best interest of the student. So we would want to make sure that it's a good move, it's the right move, and the family that's a part of the PPT decision-making 
and the team where that student currently is, along with us, Felton representatives, we make a decision that's in the best interest of the student. I do think I do think that there's a few that we can bring back. But with um, that said as well, have house town family says I rather have my child here correct. in Shelton than driving thirty four that may be appeal to the parents says, oh I want them. And I think that you have to anticipate future. So this isn't unique, that number. That's a year-to-year -year thing. Yeah. So if you have a program like this, in moving forward, we wouldn't be recommending the out-of-district. No right. need to recommend. Right. Right. Recommendation. So. So. Benefit. What I'm saying is what I'm getting at. Well, we have a summer. Yes. Too. Summer so we have extended program. school year, and typically out of district placements do as well. And you're right, there is I'm, consistency is important. Stop, right. You know. Consistency and access to their services is so important. Um, and typically, our, our extended school year services run through the month of July, which gives them a break in June and then a couple weeks in August before they come back. And, Mr. Rosetti, to your point, Here's a prime example. Talk about this. We have a very ready that other towns don't have. Other towns and their children to our summer school. Mm -hmm. This would almost be the same concept. Ah, they're yeah. coming to they're already coming to us in summer. They stay with us for the school year. Tracy, hypothetically. So say we get this program up and running and we'd like to. And then, you know, of course, anyone afraid that you are. Would we all, because say, you know, it might be too late to call people. Would you be like calling a people? Yes. Yeah. We'll yes. Go and you'll make if we had an appropriate call. service that we knew would be best for a student? Absolutely. Right. Teams can well, convene. You're not waiting. No, <laughs> teams can convene PPTs at any time right. when something isn't working for a student. And I, and I also say with my experience, um, so that I was so for me, as you know, I was a what happened in that program there, which well, um, have a middle school Ugly. Don't want to. Now you're talking about, you know, during those years of how large a child goes, you have this, this eighth grade student now, possibly old. In Milford, we used to let them play to the alternative school, finish their eighth grade. Hi. Environment gets them out of that, you know, it's better for the student, better for the environment itself. Would have that possibility. Out of that staff, because it's one, it's basically one teacher for academic, no support. How many kids could that handle till we have to know the ratio? So I guess that's a that's a difficult question because it's going to be based on the the dynamic and the grouping. Um, sometimes we have students that, you know, if they have mental health issues or social and emotional issues, um, they might present in different ways. Some are internalizers, they hide in their shell a little bit. Um, some are externalizers where we get some aggressive behavior. Um, you know, sometimes there may be the need for a higher level of support for some particular students for any particular reason. So, you know, that type of structure though right there, um, you know, when there's a content area teacher for each core subject um, and they gel well, this usually works quite quite well. Um, when you talk about electives and business courses and STEM courses, you know, there are, there are really good um, avenues. Uh, some are endorsed by the State Department of Education. 
to allow students that are in satellite to learn uh, alternative programs to be able to access a wider array of curriculum. Um, so we certainly could tap into some of those virtual or web-based types of opportunities. So that's something that can help mitigate the need for bringing in language or elective or STEM. Um, but I have to offer them. So if it's a comprehensive high school, they're going to need the credits that they need towards graduation. Um, but as you know, as I said, there's there's really uh, very creative ways that we can we can go about that. We, we also discuss too. Often, if the need arrives and graduate, Harry Hills, you have had in the past had specialized people. Right. Where, mm -hmm. where, you know, again, there's two gyms and, you know, we set up with staff there, provide them with walk over mm -hmm. to the school mm -hmm. function because the location of the module mm -hmm. on one of our, so we can try to utilize outside. So this is the staff that's going to do the everyday functions of the program, but we can maximize that by using staff that's uh, alternative learning centers, too, it's an ebb and flow. We're always pushing for kids to do well so that they can return to their home school. You know, having the alternative letter learning center so close to Shelton High School would even allow for a midday van to bring kids up to take Spanish or business at the high school in the afternoon and go home on the bus in the afternoon. Um, so there's lots of options here. And the whole idea with an alternative school um, is that there's much more flexibility that you can make uh, within somebody's school day to have them be successful. For years now, as long as I've been here, have bust yeah. math program. Same thing with our alternative programs. If there's a certain elective. Yep. So how many? Um, I didn't walk in, <clears throat> and I I don't know if you thought of the exact way or something. When we say we could in this, now it may be 7 k 12, 15, 20, charge tuition. But how have you thought of the layout in there? Acts? I mean, it might be not perfect because of the fact that, you know, I'm just thinking like, say, you know, a, a, a surrounding town. I send kids there. You know, we might have to more, but is it 10 more? Or, I, I think it's all going to be circumstantial. Yeah. You know, right. you have to, again, as you said, you have <laughs> The last thing you want to do is out the room. Of course. So it would right. still just be then maybe on a key. Mm -hmm. Right. So we but would, right. I know. And right. Classroom sizes are. Mm -hmm. They're large classroom. We talk about dividers. Mm -hmm. We even separate the classrooms themselves. Make little pods and modulars. So right. there's a lot of room to. And then from there we would take on a key. Yeah. And then we would have to say that happened. Happened to me. How would that transfer? Us. That would be on the school district. That would be on the sending school district. Yeah, that's just what we're paying now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, school district. I'll use Derby as an Derby. They might say, "Yeah, I'd rather send them to Belton, right. save money, transportation, travel, mm -hmm. than send them to East over in here. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. longer travel time, longer." Travel. I mean, you have to look at before we have some say it's it's at Take two kids, we charge them half to each. As long as we don't need to hire more staff, then we're, then we're negative. Mm. But it all has to just, correct. No, yeah. we, it all has to just to, be on a case by case. Yes. Right. Even based on how much we charge for tuition, because of it. it's all in the idea of what our capacity is. The capacity. Our need. We need to address the needs of our students. And at that point, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Other thoughts?
All right. Uh, number five is a request for a Shelton High School uh, full-time special education teacher. And this is sheerly due to enrollment um, and due to the direct service hours required. Um, this has produced the number of students that have come into the high school uh, has produced very large collaborative sections, um, especially in our math classes. So really this is IEP requirement um, to, to fulfill the direct service time at the high school currently. Uh, happening is, we all know, graduating option, private school, magnet school, get natural. But you'll notice that our high school enrollment, uh, that enrollment is something that into with high school. Those people are moving, are coming. So our high school, high school, this would be. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, it's really the, the collaborative sections. Connecticut State Department that looks for a ratio. Uh, and right now it's very skewed. Um, there are many, many more special education students in our collab sections than there are general education students. And that ratio should be a little bit more uh, even um, according to, you know, the guidelines and the recommendations from the State Department. That's one full time. One full-time teacher. Yeah, if you can get it, if you can get in the first step, the shortage here. That sixty-five thousand is uh, not step one. Oh, that's not step one. That's yeah. step five. Well, right. For the health of well, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, if we hire somebody at step one. No, no, no. Is. I'm. Excuse me. I'm starting. Sixty. Yes. Not included. That does, correct? That does. Yes. Where? That does. Yes. Higher. Wait a minute. Step one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Step one, you want to. You don't hire anybody. For I'm just throwing that out. I don't have the contract no. with me. No. I could it's, go get it's it. Their budget we do not. not. Trust me. Not. Oh, that 65000 So, so Jim, no, I'm, I'm just trying account. to figure out how no, much it is. I was going to get the contract. Member of this board, for hand, sixty-five thousand is placeholder. Okay, but you know what? Five. Here's where we run into a problem. We never add in. We never put a placeholder in right, for health insurance. I've been saying this. Our placeholder. What's the value? What's the value of our health insurance? We always talking about health insurance. You gonna have to put in another twenty five thousand on top of that minimum for help. Period. Okay. Step step one bachelor. Huh? And step one bachelor. Okay. Fifty six. So you're you're saying can't be step one. It's fed bachelor's. No, it could be a bachelor's. They have to get their masters right. within a certain amount of time upon entry. Okay. They're hard to get anyways. I'm not going to hire 25. Them. They are. 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I Jackie, think good. I can hear fine. our complaint. Well, this is our complaint all the time. So yeah. now that Jackie here, I can increase her. Maybe there, well, we would be happy to. Pardon me. Happy. To. Absolutely. Your list. Okay, so this 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 special ed teacher. Hopefully, we can get someone fresh out of college. A bunch of them coming out. Uh. I know someone that's graduating. <laughs> the res I can, I can never fill it out right now. I don't know if we're going to get a discount, but maybe she won't go on our insurance. <laughs> That's right. the discount. We'll talk to her. <laughs> Anyways, they're going to help. Uh, yeah, re 
especially in math classes, you're saying. So we're still very large collaborative. I know someone that's graduated. <laughs> I could get them on step one. And, and they're going to want health insurance. <laughs> Should I move on? And they're healthy. Yeah, okay. I have one more. <laughs> okay. For them. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of the, the other things that we talked about, and I did bring it up earlier, is our 18 through 22 programming. Uh, I mentioned that the program that we currently have at Shelton High School is more for community awareness, uh, work experience, independent living skills. Our population um, that's in our current uh, 18 through 22 program, our transition program, our students with intellectual disabilities, autism, multiple disability. Uh, and by, you know, by Connecticut State Department of Ed's uh, requirements for transition planning, we also have to think about post-secondary education. Every student from age 14 on has a post-secondary education and an employment goal. So we can't only focus on employment and community awareness. We have to, if the team feels it's needed, plan for post-secondary education awareness. Uh, we currently don't have that. Uh, we have several students that are in this school year out at satellite programs like Post and Waterbury or Glen Home uh, up in Washington Depot, uh, you know, we by by looking at those students and taking their current tuition minus the excess cost reimbursement. So this is after excess cost reimbursement. We spend two hundred and ten thousand dollars this year on tuition. If we were to expand our transition programming uh, through a proposal, and the proposal link is there for you. Please, I'm not, I can't go through it, it's long, it's involved, but it includes what the services would look like, it includes the Connecticut core transition skills that would be addressed, it includes how a partnership with Quinnipiac University, which is a teaching university. So the people that would be working with our kids are going to be social workers, OTs, PTs, nurses, yes. lawyers. And these people are experts at transition. I know because I, I, I was there. Our Cheshire program is there. The university celebrates students with disability being on their campus. They were very willing last year to expand their services. I wrote a proposal with Region 9 uh, which is where I formerly worked. I'm still very uh, in good touch with them. And they're willing to partner with us. So it is a proposal. Please read it. If we were to do this, it would be an ongoing program that we could currently and in the future recommend our kids that would benefit so much from this type of gap year, preparing them for a college campus with experts in the field uh, for a very low cost. So um, that's our five students that we currently have in the right? So there are five students currently in the 18 through 22 programming. Uh, we haven't, you know, we're not sure about where their position will be next year. Some may exit. Right. But there's also students at the high school right. that may be PPT'd for similar programs. Um, Sometimes after people are done with their credits, PPT teams will recommend transition services only. And it becomes post-secondary ed employment and independent living. It's part of what we need to do through the IEP. It's a legal requirement and it's good for kids. <clears throat> right. So, uh, you know, as I said, I'm not going to take the time to, to read the proposal for you, but I hope you do because you'll see that it's an amazing opportunity for our youth. I'll just do Oh, that I said. So, have to bus these there, or they have to find transit? Well, some do drive. Some do drive there. Um, if they Quinnipiac would allow anybody that had their license to drive. Okay. They, they do that currently. 
um, but we would have to bust those that don't. Uh, we would be sharing costs with Region 9. Uh, Where's Region 9? Region 9 is East and Reading. Oh, okay. Joe Barlow High right. School. Um, and the thing that, uh, you know, I know from experience with this type of uh, program when I ran it at, at uh, Cheshire, for Cheshire Public Schools, they're currently on campus as well. Uh, the nice thing about it is they will allow, meaning Quinnipiac, uh, opportunity for other districts as well. So in other words, if we only have, let's say, Region 9 has five students and Shelton has five students one year. Really the cap by Quinnipiac is 10. Uh, okay, but let's say we don't have five. We could open it up to other towns and send and they would give us tuition. So we did that through Cheshire with Wallingford. Oh yeah. Okay, so right. it's a revenue that comes in if we don't have that five student ratio that meets the, the, the 10 minimum or maximum. That's correct. So I think probably maybe a follow up on this because as I said, it's a, it's a lengthy read, the description, but I'm happy to answer any questions in the future about it. Uh, Region nine is on board. I've been in touch with their director on a couple different occasions and their superintendent is in a great um, So it would, be a, it would be a share, it would be a share. Yes, yeah, so we wrote, I, I, I wrote the proposal last year and presented it to the Region 9 Board of Ed. We, we worked on the idea that we would build it during the year because this year, we didn't have a pocket of kids at Joe Barlow at, at Region 9, but this coming next year, they will. They'll have a few. So uh, we knew that it would be a building year. Uh, and, you know, when I reached out this year to the director, uh, she was very on board with the idea of sharing. Correct. And we'll need that time because it's a lot to start a program like that. Uh, so we would we would need that time. To so there's 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 so with the staffing, um, the proposal would be a share of a special ed teacher. <coughs> in in Region Nine's proposal to their board last year. Uh, I proposed the special education teacher, which was accepted. So I would think that our position could be um, the paraprofessional support, as well as there's a placement fee. So in order to share a space, which is a classroom, like a hub where they meet in the morning, um, it would be a contracted space. Uh, when I left Cheshire, that was about $30,000. I would estimate it would be about $35,000. So depending on the number of kids and the amount of need, maybe one paraprofessional or two. With two paraprofessionals, you're estimating approximately $75,000. With one, you would drop that down. Um, so uh, the whole idea of this type of program is that the kids that we would be recommending have a, a higher level of independence. They're trialing college classes. Um, yeah. So the idea that paraprofessional support um, isn't going to be like one-to-one -one support, okay? And it's, it's outstanding programming. It would be a, a shining star. Yeah. Yes, buses, buses would be a cost. Yep, for sure. Yes. Yes. I got, I, I got you, Trace. We're going to get the little bus. Oh. oh, you mean sharing with Region 9? Uh, share the bus. Why would you send them? They would send their own. 
Probably yes. Or van. Which we now or have van. Three, or we, which we now have three of. Okay, are there any um, questions for Tracy regarding ed, special ed proposals? I, I would just like to mention you did an awesome job. I was oh, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Very thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I want to circle back and talk about um, the modular at Perry Hill. Uh, there was a site visit that we did a week ago, two weeks ago, um, there were some requests that happened. So John Calhoun actually had uh, a team over there today. Um, they went on the roof. They went underneath hey. the whole thing. Yes. And uh, the report that I got from John is basically that it is structurally sound. Ooh. There are no major concerns. The roof is good. They actually underneath um, the modular, and I don't know how John phrased it, but there's, there's like a, uh, some type of apron that prevents moisture from coming up. There's like, you know, he said that's that's in place. So, so I have some, also, I had originally stated that No, But I think fire, see if we put it in, I was going through some of the plans. Those Slightly newer, 20 years new, but they're in the 90s, uh, those right. modules, which made me feel a little better. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's not like the cars from the 50s, it's kind of from the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easier to get parts. So the only, uh, like John said, there, there are no structural concerns. That's good. Obviously, he said anything that needs to be addressed um, could be done in-house. He said they went through the plumbing, they went through the electrical, they did everything. Um, he said the only thing that... Uh, was noteworthy, they're not concerned, you know where is. Um, the is. The AC unit is an older model, he said, but it works. And, and he said, he's like, but I'll put it this way, we have boilers in our schools that are much older. <laughs> like, so it kind of goes right in line with where, where we currently parts. are. We're talking yeah, about yeah. parts. Well, he said, he goes, it can be serviced. He said, even though it's older, it's still a model that, that they still they're have in older. service. They're I don't remember. I really don't remember. I, I, forget, I, I forget. Yeah, I don't remember. But it's on the um, roof, Jim. So those are easy to put so, in. So, so structurally, you know, we ha we have a viable building there for use. There is a cost that we have to incur this year to get it up to speed, um, and and this cost is it would be a one time it would be a capital. I would present it to the city as a capital. This is to basically upgrade this area to a classroom. I mean, it hasn't been used as a classroom for however long. Um, Glenn's team went in there, um, and I have the breakdown from Glenn oh, in terms great. of cost. So, Glenn went in there. Glenn had some contractors that we that the school system has gone in there to give us some some estimates um, for the work. I have it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the city is on board with. Paul well, here. Thank you. Ken. The city would be on board with transferring it back to us? Yes, I, I, mayor's pretty supportive of it. So um, if you look at the cost here, first of all, okay. we would need to get phones. There's a phone line, but there's absolutely no phones in, in the building itself. So we have to get phones into there, and there's the cost for the phones. Um, and the installation of the phones and, and putting them, because again, whatever phones they used back then aren't the same back kind of phones. Well, mm. whatever that was had phones. <laughs> are not the same phones we use today. So there would be an installation cost that he found out. Um, interactive boards. So the same interactive boards that we have in our, in our schools, we would put the new interactive boards in, in each of the classrooms. That's the highest cost there. Um, those are the same vendors that do the work for our school system. They are on the state bid list. Um, so, you know, that, that's where they would go. Uh, of course, we want a printer. You can't have a functional school without printing and the printing costs. So when we say printer, I thought I hope you know printer means printer copier. They're the big big yeah. machines that do printing Probably and copying. You know, um, 
that's Jim, this answers your question with the cabling and the wireless. So that's what they kind of looked at is the cabling that they'd have to either connect to or work with, as well as um, it's about you know $5,500 for the wireless access point. So what they would do is what we currently have at the high school um, stadium, football stadium, it gets its internet Wi-Fi services from an access point that just beams it over from the high school. We would be doing the same thing by doing that to Perry. And um, the aspect behind that is also aligned with our cybersecurity. We would not want to pick up lines that were existing there because we don't know where those lines are traced. So this way, if we beam it from Perry Hill, they're feeding off the school system security network. Um, the rest of the work would be done in house. The tech center would put in computer stations for the teachers, the students, um, and Glenn would insist that because of all the networks there, that we would put a battery backup in there. You know, you know if any, we lose power, we don't want to lose everything within the building itself. So the, the grand total cost is slightly under $30,000, which would be a one time um, cost to get that building. With, with John Calhoun's piece, as he said, there's no major things said typical maintenance work that we would get that up to grade. This would just be on the technical end of the 30,000 um, and that building would be functional to bring school, bring and children. It, it into would it. be capital funding. That is this would have to be, I, I, I would not put this in our budget. This would be separate. This would be capital. It, that doesn't, it doesn't include the items to the separate. Mr. Romano was referring to, um, there was a state grants that we applied for conjunction with the city of Shelton. I will be speaking with the mayor about it. Tomorrow, the mayor and I had spoken about it months ago. This was a while back that we did. Mr. Rosetta, you'll remember this grant. Do you remember at the time when we, when the mayor had the plan, they wanted to with those little clickers for everyone, the little buttons? Yeah. yeah. So this we, is what that grant was a part of. Yeah, we have it. Correct. So this was the whole grant. That did not get passed in the grant, but everything else in the grant got passed. And that was multiple things for the city as well as the school system. That included upgrade cameras. That included a repeater for a radio tower. Mike Maglion was involved in this. That would be better service for emergency personnel in terms of what we, I mean, there's, there's a whole, but it's a reimbursement grant. The aldermen need to appropriate funds to buy all these, which we already have all the, the quotes for it. And then part of that is the security we included there in the modular to upgrade cameras, because we want all our schools to have cameras. You know. The only thing that we put in for the grant that did not pass, that I did speak to the mayor about originally, and I spoke to the city finance director about it, that they know if they're putting all that money in, it wouldn't be a reimbursement, but we would need to have, is the cost to change the lock, put it on an electronic card system, um, like our schools right now, it's a, it's literally a key. You know, we have the, so we, we would do that. That's not under the reimbursement, but we would be asking the city to include that when they would do this whole security. And the we haven't spent any of the grants. The city has to appropriate so, the to money. Pay. It's none of our money. It's the city has to pay for it. The only thing is, is because these are special needs. Um, Greg, no. Oh. Kids and nurse. Especially. Well, I, I'm also going to say that, again, if power went out in our schools, and this has happened in the past, we only allow our kids to stay in the schools for a minimal time, and then we dismiss them. We, right. we don't keep children in this, even uh, with the power, with the backup right. power. We, we send them home. So you, if that unique situation, and it has happened in our district where we've lost power, the squ squirrel goes up in the transformer. School's out of power, you know, bye-bye <laughs> squirrel, kids are going home, <laughs> you know. Oh, I know, poor little guy. Listen, I, I don't mind asking for money. I'm just saying we can't count on it. You know, we're not going to say that the CEO. I'd rather it's, 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 you, it's, Jimmy. It's, it's, I'd rather <laughs> you leave. I'd be lean, Jimmy. I understand. Right. But so, I'd rather so, just, like, we Yeah, but. Yeah, I am. So with that, with that all being said, um, we're looking for a um, uh, a cost of approximately $30,000 to get this modular building ready. Once it's building ready, that's a $30,000 one-time capital cost. We now have a functional school ready to fill. We, we put the program in place, which we're, we're estimating around, we'd say, I'm going to say 300000 if you're going to give and take the flow, around 300000 that would be 
sustainability for the program. I mean, like, like any school gets a budget, that would be the budget that this school would pick up on a regular basis. You know, so they would have their line item for the alternative school where you'd see staff break down supplies and everything about 300,000 added. But as we talked about, the investment, the return on the investment, the other time, what we'd be saving on outplacement, what we'd be saving on special transportation, those costs would reduce, which we hope would far exceed the 300,000 we would to maintain the building. And then eventually, if we get to a place that we can monetize it and get tuition costs and, and revenue for the school system. Now, oh, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering if we can include um, getting the, the dividers up and the furnishings included in the capital budget. So that thank you for bringing that because that's what we talked about. And I've had the conversation with, with Kathy Riddle. There is furniture at the high school that we would furnish oh. it with high school furniture. We wouldn't have to buy new furniture. Okay. And ironically, those of you who were there for the tour, there's these. There's a room full of dividers yeah. that, oh, that we've inquired to the city. The city doesn't even know what they're doing in there. So when the city turns it over to them, we're going to say, can we keep the dividers? So that we'll have to do But when it comes to like student desks and chairs, yeah. we have enough at the high school even in storage, that we can bring them over and, and, That's and supply. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't have to furnish it. Uh, we would have. We wouldn't have a cost for furnishing. Cool. I'm going to sort of jump around here, but I'm going to see Abilene. Um, sorry. I was saying you can probably turn we it off. Submit our budget. Right. By the time we all timing of everything, everything's submit that in there it's going to be already there. mayor has already said full on board alternative <laughs> okay and we have that grant we're discussing spending conversation and and i air everybody to try to get that grant on the board of aldermen agenda so they Sturdy. can start appropriating it and that might Power. even happen as early as now so then <laughs> i would so of course i'm Let's thinking see. too that it's like well they're on board. I'd want to get this on their agenda too, to appropriate that. Well, but as, then we all have know, to discuss. I, I have a meeting timing. with the mayor tomorrow. Right, you have a meeting with the mayor tomorrow. And I'm bringing this with right. me. I would say show him that tomorrow. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> to say, because if I know we're jumping ahead, but it's the timing is off. When no, you're absolutely right. Yep, you're absolutely right. So if right. they're yep. on board tomorrow, you know, well, no, 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 we, we need to get the building up. Tell him that tomorrow. So then. Going to just jump around a little. I, I'm with you and on as that. As long as That's the rest why. of the board members feel that we want to move forward with this, they want to move. Forward. I, and I know and Paul. Get it on the I, I have, agenda and get it appropriate. I have copies for the mayor, Paul Hillard, and I've already spoken to John Inglis today. So they will receive all these copies. Then it's up to them. Obviously, there's an aldermatic meeting on the eighth. Hope for the best of them. Our agenda. Right. Bring, bring Tracy. Well, yeah, I know. I, even a little <laughs> bit excited, like I did. <laughs> I got excited. So, well, I know after so I see this ideas. that I, I don't, I don't know I say, present <laughs> that. <laughs> Send it. Separate meeting. <laughs> okay, so you're going to show that to him so yes. that we act because we can't wait. Right? It's going to give us okay. enough time to get it going. The word All right. is. Word is get it. Yes. All right. So yes, I I was told the same quote. So, um, so as we end all of our workshops, I'm now going to give the updated walk. All right. This is also. <laughs> but I want to I want to preference this as I hand this out to anyone. Obviously, you're going to see an increase because we've talked a lot about a lot of things. All right. But what I do want to preference this increase with, I mean, I'm going to say this much. Everything on this list, as your superintendent, I'm advocating for, all right? The board needs to make the decision about what they feel is realistic to bring to the city hall or not. But with that being said, the number that you're going to see here is our cap, is the highest number. We're not coming back at you with another night to say, and, and we're going to include this, and add this to it, and add this to it. So now it's, is this a, is this a number? And, and next week... Jackie and I will, will be revisiting this, and I'll also be presenting to you, just like we did tonight, where are other districts in the same category as us landing with their budgets? And I already know, and I'm gonna, you know, not taking away from our next budget workshop presentation, 
that what you're going to see is, again, we're right in the middle. We're not asking for more than others. We're not asking for less. You are the elected officials. You know the relationships we have with City Hall. You have the conversations offline with our you know, aldermatic um, members and the mayor in terms of what's feasible. And we always have to preference this as well. Tomorrow night, or I mean next Thursday when the vote's taking place, is step one in a budget process that doesn't end until May. You know, so again, we don't want to get so hung up on where's this number now or what's it going to be like when, we, when we're going to have continual discussions filled in. So uh, all that said, so I need to explain when you're going to see the special ed column because you're going to see a lot of numbers in the special ed column. As I preferenced it earlier, uh, and, and I can speak in my time as superintendent, you know, special ed has not been adequately funded. There has not been over expenditures. There's not been, there's been, you know, basically our inability to track appropriately to fund it and work with the city because of the increased enrollment and what's happening there. We've made a lot of reparations over the years of cost savings um, before Tracy came, until with Tracy here. I mean, that's always been our goal. But what we decided to do when Jackie and I met, we met with Tracy and Kristen was involved in the discussion. We had, we had a round table discussion because Kristen was overseeing special ed in the past as well. And we had, we decided that we, we need to go by actual. We need to go by what are we spending in special ed? Because if we don't put what we're spending in special ed, we're sending a budget that's already be underfunded. And then what happens here, folks? We know what happens here. Special ed is mandated. So we're going to have to freeze all the other accounts. Now we're going to start taking away from other areas, and that's not how you want to baseline your budget for presentation. So instead of looking at it as this is a substantial increase in certain items in special ed, what we're presenting you is this is our actual what we're spending. This is what we're spending in special ed. So if we're going to budget for what we spend, we're going to give that number. All right. Here we go. The teacher in me is going to say, everyone's going to look at the bottom right. What's the bottom number? I don't care about any other columns. Just tell me what the bottom number is. <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Tracy's making uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through things that you already know, but just so you can see, because this... This, in essence, is where we'll be basing our night a week from today in terms of our finals. So um, you're looking at our actual, our approved budget, our operational budget that we are doing right now this year. Mm -hmm. The first column is the contractual increases we are obligated to meet. We talked about that in our first budget workshop. Um, those are all the factors that we need to put in um, if, the, if the school system was status. Then we had the discussion the other day about the ARP ESSER grant and the need to take on those fundings. That's column number three. You know what we should do on this, Jackie? No, nope, for next time, we should put numbers on the top of the columns when we refer to column one. Okay. <laughs> the, the, next, the next column after that, as you all remember, we talked about staffing on Tuesday night. Um, we were looking to increase in terms of a business teacher as well as a, a security guard. So then you get to the next column, which is special ed. Now, any kind of encumbered cost with salary would be included in the salary increase. So there's no adjust that that's why you're seeing numbers no numbers necessarily with the staffing piece what you're seeing in special ed is the actuals these are the actual costs that you're that you're going to see now just to kind of put things in perspective when we looked at last year's budget and the overage where we were in special ed now although we netted it out because we froze accounts we froze spending we ended the year last year at a $1.8 million deficit in special ed alone. Now, we mitigated that. I mean, we had the health insurance, we had all of that stuff. I mean, the budget ended up at 2.4, was it? 2.4, but you know, and most of it was healthcare because we, we, we made the adjustments to cover special ed. But if you just do the special ed without making those adjustments, it was 1.8. So now you're looking here, you know, we're saying we need the 1.5 to kind of make that work. And then we talk about the other expenditures. You'll see now a total there that talks about the alternative <laughs> school. It's the new staff that we just mentioned in the presentation, as well as some of those supplies that we needed for the school, which then gives you your grand total. It's the proposed budget for next year. So we're going from 77 million and change to 82 million and change, 
which would give a percentage increase of 6.23%. That's where we are, folks. So how I'm going to end this evening is very simple. Um, I ask the board to please provide me with their thoughts, their feedback, what they think we should increase, what we think we should decrease. Um, Jackie and I goal is based on your feedback and input, please speak to the board chair. I'll be meeting with the board chair before next Thursday's presentation. Based on all of your feedback and what I'll get from the board chair herself, we will update this as necessary. We'll be presenting this a week from today, and then it's up to you guys to make that vote. I'm, I'm moving it forward. Question. Yes. The tuition under special education, is that um, <coughs> the increase, say, for A for that? that yes. Like we went through the numbers, and we included all cost increase for tuitions. Okay. Tuition, special ed, and max. <laughs> we, we did that cost. And you'll notice that there... There is the, the increased spending, which we get to on the numbers, and we did include what we would get back in um, excess cost grant as well as the 2% grant. We know that those, and I know in speaking to the mayor and speaking to the city, they want us to do that. Because they say, they know we get that money, so they want us to make sure that we don't account for that money. If we didn't account for that money, we'll be asking for more money than we need. So we're being transparent and honest, or we're registering that, that money in as we see it, so we're not asking for more money than we actually need. We know we'll get that money back in time. And is, is part of the logic with um, some of Tracy's proposals and ideas on um, maximizing keeping our kids district <coughs> both to serve them and um, over the years, over the next couple of years, and that tuition line will probably stay steady, come down a I think that, it might come down goal. a little it, bit. It'll come down. Our like goal is, is that, again. Currently, we have to budget it this way. This is where we are. Correct. But the, the, the theme of the night being, yes. you know, return on investment, this is something that we're putting together to hope yield long-term investments of having the budget decrease. Now, the only other thing that's here is that, I, that I, I, I have to point out, I know there's still discussions there, and we've had these conversations with the city, is please note that we have done nothing with the health insurance line item. Based on our discussion with the city, we've, we've put that out, and there's no increases. It's the same. That is yet to be determined. And that's why, again, when we talk about next Thursday, when we're putting this forward, I mean, we don't know what will happen with the city, if they'll take up that cost, if they think so. We are kind of just still, we're, we have to meet our obligations to the date for the city charter, and we're going to have a lot of talks after that. You know, so we don't know what it is. And if you remember the finance meeting we just took place, we did demonstrate if you remove health care from our budget, you know, that's just, we would be under budget. So, so we can talk to the city about making all of this wonderful things happen with less money if we take out health care. Uh, So we did not put the cost savings reflected in the budget because, again, it's you have to you you can't project the cost savings because here's what happens if we put in we have to put in what it's going to cost then you get the savings if we say we're going to save this and they're going to give us less and they don't give us the money for the alternative school right. we're never going to make that savings then we're going to be short money yeah. then there could be a cost savings. So I, of course, that makes sense. Yeah, and we can do that when we put the budget book together. Yeah. We one hundred percent will present that as, as such. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, only, yep. only because when you go up, if we don't do any. Saving, you know. No, I agree. Mr. Said, I agree with you totally. I'm just saying this has to yeah. add up. We have to make this add. We can't put a fictitious number in on the table. go into a meeting. Yep. Um, but the presentation part of it has to be included. Um, yep. Yep. It, that'll be part of the budget book. Yep. And that goes a long way. Yep. You need to spend this to save that. 
Huh? Right. Yep. Exactly. Definitely. And that, and that goes. And, and I'm going to use the same argument I used every time I've presented the alderman so far because we've done this in the past and you've been a part of this. If we generate a savings by this and we don't use that money oh, as we've done in the past, we will give that money back to the city. We have evidence to prove that. We have board meetings and records where we've given money back to the city. Uh, it has a, <laughs> nothing <laughs> significant. It, it, but but it had, we've, we've done nothing significant, but we've done. I'm saying I, I, in my I, tenure as superintendent, I, I we have given our money back to the city. I know there's been past you know, issues where money was withheld. have more money in my wallet right no. now than what we gave. Do you have $660,000 in your wallet? Because that's what we gave back one year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> your wallet. <laughs> oh, you're giving me a raise to my salary this year? <laughs> okay, I see two flaws in the numbers that I would like to better self-reflect. Sure. One is general education staff of $25,000 for security it really is more lumped back into that original 270 based on our conversation because of security guard based on Tracy's 270. That was in there. It was discussed. I feel like it needs to... No, no. The, 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 no. the yeah. general ed security guard is the, is the full-time at SIS. Okay. But then... At the, but then we have to account for a part-timer in the alternative school. Okay, but it says one the security guard. Where are you under looking? under Tracy's because name. we're going to take a part timer at SAS. If we get the full time at SAS, then we're going to take one of the part timers, part -timers move them to the alternative it. school, and make them full time. And make so them we're only paying for half of a person. Okay, so that out of that, this is only paying for half. Okay. Yes. All right. So, but um, but Tracy made a comment that because I brought up, I'm concerned about the school psychologist and counseling not being in here, and you said, well. We would incorporate that with the pre-K number, but then in turn, the pre-K number is not in here. We're not asking for the pre-K program to move forward. So then now you're going to be short under the 270 in order to hire a 0.5 school psychologist or counselor to help those kids. Okay, because so added that 270 in the list, if you even pulled it up again, there's no school psychologist help with all of those kids that's okay. under the sped that's column okay. under special ed where it's the 207 and the 50 oh yes you see new certified yeah. staff 207 under special ed that's where the school psychologist that's is perfect. That, hey i'll show you here i'll point it out right here see new staff special yeah. ed 07 so you're figuring so you're already that's where we put the, that's where we put the money for this Right. Well, why wouldn't we slide it over? I'd like to slide it over then into the alternative program line item for the pre-K. Okay. Well, yeah. well hold on. let me let me stop here. Okay. okay. We need a counselor or a school psychologist to help with that school. We have to. Can't okay. ask the people up here. Okay. They're overloaded. So if you're saying you're going to hire one and it's in that two hundred seven, put that dollar amount. In the alternative high school line, and it takes a better self reflect. We, we would have to lower the two hundred seven. Yes, but it's but it's really for that. Is it for that school? Well, it's, it's, it's for, for the pre K. Well, so, 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 so the so the in this program you didn't show pre K. So is pre K in here? Like you want pre K is in the two hundred seven. Yeah. Okay. Where it well, says then the maybe new, we the do a separate staff. column that says pre K program, new pre K. All, all the new staff that, that we presented up there, the teacher for the high school. Oh, the, the okay. Well, you're staff. Not That's all that. the 207. Okay. Well, hold on. well that you was know, in the presentation. You know what helped? The yeah, but you're not showing us that because you gave us a new column. Yeah. So I was under the and I was under the impression that you're not that the special education line item is just our increasing costs. But then you're only even though Tracy just did all this, we're just asking for no, the alternative. Because that's why if you look at the column here where it says new. New, new, we'll okay. new. That's th those were added. They were never appeared in the walkthrough it, before. It yeah. would help. Let's make columns then oh, for that. It would be climate. Well, but uh, but I would like to. I, I Do you want to see a breakdown of staff? Yes, like, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. So we're we're saying <laughs> as far as sped goes. I understand where you're going. We're saying that we would need two point five. Certified staff. We would need a part-time school psychologist certified. So that would be in the 207. 
the 50,000 would be for two parrots. At Which we put in the presentation, we need two pairs for the pre k It would be even okay. better, more detailed, that certified yeah. staff includes four teachers for the alternative program, X teachers for pre-K. So, so again, they all are. for next Thursday, we would be happy to spell out yes. those positions yeah. under yeah. where those costs sure. are. Sure. Right. I, I would honestly like to sort of see, like you're doing a column, I would like to say like new pre-K program. You should just ask. You know, no, 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 I'm saying. Well, it's just because to me, I miss that. I miss the whole new. I'm so, not even looking at that column. Anymore. I just want to, for purposes of clarification to the board, okay? Yeah. What this sheet is is just the numbers. Right. Remember, we put together a comprehensive right. budget book that breaks down That's all the numbers and expenditures and details. Remember those binders that you all get that's this yeah. thick? Yeah. That'll have all that spelled out when we put it together. I mean, that, that and that's what we send to the alderman, to the mayor, to Paul Hiller, to you guys. We do that. All those things would be presented. If you would like to see those numbers for Thursday, we'll, we'll have it for you for next Thursday. We'll, we'll spell those out next right. Thursday. I, we, don't, we don't print all these sheets of all the, the, the line items for every budget meeting. Because you see the guy, you see the budget. We have, you as a board have monthly finance meetings. You see that operational budget every month. So it's, it's there, it's visible, we're seeing it. So we don't, we don't bring it here because we know you have a working knowledge of it. When we're doing the workshops, we're just working off of this sheet to show you the costs. We're only talking about costs, but we'd be happy on Thursday to kind of delineate what these numbers mean um, yeah. for Thursday. We can do that. I'd like to see a column that says pre-K program. Because you want to make a new program, you know, you, another classroom. So to me, you know, if I'm looking at it, besides just I need a teacher, I need this, I get that. That's under no, you call them. And then all of a sudden you just lump that with special ed to me. That doesn't belong there. Now that we're doing like new programs, I would just like after special education, have another column that says pre-K, you know, new program. And then list that staff, that school psychologist. That, that it, you know, that special education teacher you need, so that it totals to the one sixty five. Well, more than one, whatever that number was. So then, therefore, okay. now what, when we, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm saying that we say these are new programs right what, here. What, what we did tonight tonight was about special ed. We right. included all those costs in special ed, and then we told you what they are in the column. But we will yeah. break them out for this sheet. You can yeah. do it next. Just week. so then I could yep. look back and be like, here's Fine. our contract obligations. Here's our new teachers that we need. And then here's our new programs that will eventually bring cost saving measures as well. And that now, because if you were say I'm say I'm an alderman looking at this right now, I know it'd be presented differently, but I would have lost the 3K thing. All I'm seeing in my eyes is that you need two hundred and sixty thousand dollars for new staff. What do you mean? I want to separate that just so that I could always look back and say, well, guys, but if I invest again. Two hundred thousand in pre-K. It's clear and defined to me because I go back and I talk to these people, and I could show them my sheet. Sure. And in sure. pre-K, that new pre-K program that I agree with Tracy. Can Can, can I you know, ask you a question we'll, we'll in terms of how, how it's presented though? If we parcel out pre-K, are we going to leave the Singleton High School special ed teacher by itself, or do you now then want to move Put them over where the other staff is? Put it under staff. Is that going to be under new staff? Put it under this, just the new staff proposals. Okay, yeah. that's why I'm asking. We'll move right. it under new staff proposals. Put that okay. under new staff proposals, and then pre K new program, alternative program. Because then, therefore, it's more defined why we're asking them to invest in that dollar amount. I'm glad you asked for another column when I keep telling yeah, Jackie. Yeah, I need another when column. I, when I tell Jackie, I need, I need another column. column. Jackie kind of nope. twinges when we need another I column. I also want to make sure. <laughs> I, also want to make sure <laughs> I also want to make sure that we have the staff appropriated, you know, for that school psychologist, for this one, for that one, and, and that I could see it clearly broken down. Okay. Got it. Because I don't want it to come back. And when I say, well, where's that school psychologist? Oh, well, you know, I could say it was in that column. Yeah. <laughs> Are we including our placeholder for the, from the sixty five to include? That's Are you okay with the sixty five for the new hire? I don't think so. What's a reasonable? Uh, 
So are you saying 75? 80? 76? Yeah. Five, 76. And, and, I, and that's fine. We'll raise it. I'm just saying it, 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 the, re, the debate behind this is because is it, it was always a variable because, you, you know, again, right. you do have a family, but then you can you, we can hire someone on step one who's right out of college. They don't have a family. So they're, right. they are, they're a single right. plan. Well, you know, like this Jackie. Like, so, so you're lowballing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Industries nationwide have a formula evaluate everybody. Okay. Get hired. I'm good. Well, maybe, uh, Jackie, you could work on that before next Thursday. Yeah. Do some so, history. I know so, healthcare is a little bit of a. Um, um, I'm just going to say to the board and then that. Maybe talk to Jimmy the prior to Thursday <laughs> and as the finance chair and talk about it with him in the next week to make sure he's comfortable moving forward and you could agree prior to Thursday's meeting. I just want to say to, say to the board then that you decide. know then I have to take back my word that that number on the bottom right is going to change for next week. It yeah. could change very small. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 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 it but it's going to change. I don't want someone to say, hey, but you said there was fixed, that and then they come back and it changed. Correct. It's going to change. We'll, we'll, we'll make the adjustment, and there'll be a slight change to the bottom number. It's been I'll send you documented. Thank you. Got it. Okay, well, we did. Um, <laughs> does anyone else have any questions? Because we do do a hard stop for two hours. I don't mind saying. I, do, I don't want to cut anyone else because it was a big night tonight. But I do honestly, you know, of course, respect everyone's time tonight. But um, how do we all feel about ending and moving forward to our next meeting? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody feels okay. Thanks, Tracy. Good job. Yeah. Good yeah. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just want to reiterate that you definitely not as. Okay. <laughs> All right, then, then can I please uh, get a motion to adjourn? Motion. By James Orzetti. Second by anyone? Second. I'll second. By Joan. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. It's okay. I'm doing it because of Jim Feehan wants me to. Oh, okay.